All right, thank you for ev uh, everybody for being here. Uh, excited to talk about interoperability in DeFi and what we're working on here at Prime Protocol. So the main problem that we see right now is that DeFi has stagnated. And what I mean by that is you know, there was a lot of innovation that happened with you know, creating the initial borrow, lend, swapping financial primitives, and then we entered into this bull market. And uh, a lot of people just started doing the same things over and over again. And we saw a lot of these same kinds of applications, you know, X chain, Y application, um, you, know, you have the money market for like, you know, this new L1 that comes out, and then a new L1 comes out, and then you deploy five more money markets that look exactly the same on those. And during the bull market, that was fine for people because they were able to make a lot of money doing this, but we weren't actually really pushing you know, the frontiers of what's possible with DeFi forward because I think everybody got complacent uh, because what we had was working. Um, and then what people started doing was, you know, if you were issuing, you know, creating a new protocol uh, that wasn't doing a whole lot of innovation in the space, you basically subsidize the lack of product user fit with what I call Ponzi-nomics. Uh, and we entered into this uh, which I, regime, which I think is partially responsible for the bear market that we're in, where people started making assumptions about their governance token, having certain amount of value, building their whole economies and their protocols around these subsidies to basically pay people to use their products. And what I want to get back to, and what I think DeFi needs to get back to uh, over the next few years as we build to get out of this bear market, is back to value creation. We're rather than relying on paying people to use your product, they're using your product because it provides a better user experience and more financial utility. And so I think the thing that's great about DeFi are mainly these three things that I have up here. Uh, DeFi increases transparency, which is desperately needed in the financial system, both in crypto and in traditional finance. If we've learned anything from the past few months, it's that a lot of these centralized financial institutions that failed failed because people didn't know what they were lending against. If you go to DeFi and you're borrowing from a protocol, you can see exactly what that protocol has on its balance sheet and whether or not it's solvent or not. And a lot of these you know, relationships that people are basically betting on in traditional finance are not backed up by anything uh, that you could see in DeFi. So I think DeFi has really contributed to an increase in transparency. We need to get back to that. Reducing risk in financial systems. This goes hand in hand with transparency, but I think one thing that's actually really valuable about DeFi is the fact that it's over collateralized. And this prevents a lot of these bank run situations where value evaporates overnight as margin calls uh, cause people to take huge losses. The one thing that I think DeFi can improve on is capital efficiency. And this is where I think interoperability is really going to play a role in this next era of value creation in DeFi. Because so far, even when you're using uh, you know, an over-collateralized model, your money markets that you're borrowing from are basically single-chain money markets. And if you want to go use capital somewhere else on another chain, you have to bridge funds, you have to exit existing positions, and a lot of these uh, interest-bearing tokens that you're holding are basically useless if you want to go play around in another ecosystem. This also creates a lot of limits uh, if you have different specialized applications that are running on various blockchains. Um, and this is basically why Prime Protocol and a lot of us here believe that the future is going to be omni-chain. There are going to be a lot of different blockchains you know, with different consensus mechanisms and different reasons uh, for different business cases that, uh, that people are going to gravitate to. And up here I have uh, you know, the blockchain trilemma this isn't all of the reasons why you might want a new blockchain. Uh, it's not just a trade-off between security, scalability, and decentralization. Uh, there are a lot of really cool projects on Polkadot that are solving unique issues, like creating a MEV-free DEX, for example, um, or very specific business use cases that I think having your own chain is going to make much easier. But in order for these chains to be useful, we need a unifying financial infrastructure. And so what I mean by that is you know, it makes sense if you're doing some very bespoke product to have your own chain that you're offering that on. But in order to get liquidity for your product, or in order for the entire ecosystem to use your product, you need to have some sort of financial primitive 
that's basically spanning across different blockchains and is chain agnostic. Um, whether that's in lending, whether that's in swapping, whether that's in staking, I think the direction DeFi needs to move in is this idea of horizontal composability, where essentially, no matter what blockchain you're offering on, uh, what business case you're using, you can still access you know, the crypto financial infrastructure that we're building. And so that's where Prime Protocol comes in. Prime Protocol is one account for every token. It's cross-chain margining and one monetary policy. With Prime, you'll be able to deposit on any blockchain, take out a loan anywhere else, regardless of where the collateral is located, and repay that loan anywhere you want. It's one experience that spans all of crypto. And that's really what we want to enable, is basically one line of credit for everything. And what we think this is going to create is a whole new wave of value that people get, not only by improving the user experience, being able to plug into one system that's you know, applicable everywhere, but also the increased financial utility that comes from being able to borrow against the diversified portfolio um, that's on every blockchain that you want to play in. And so I just want to emphasize this idea of horizontal composability and why this is so important in our financial infrastructure. Let's say you're you know, a yield aggregator or you're a consumer-facing platform and you want to be offering your users an experience where they can borrow against all of their positions in your platform. As that consumer-facing app, you don't want to have to be dealing with all of these bridges moving customer funds from one place to another or trying to explain to people, hey, you actually can't borrow at you know, this low rate because you have collateral over here. Um, it, it just makes for a terrible, confusing user experience when you have all these different interest rates uh, and all of these different, basically, isolated financial ecosystems. And so what Prime is aiming to do is, by using Moonbeam, Polkadot, and Axelar, is basically span all of these different blockchains, starting with the EVM and with Polkadot, so that you can have one unified financial experience where you can borrow at one rate no matter where you are. And then anybody, whether it's you know, a trader, a consumer-facing application, or a yield aggregator, can plug into that financial layer. And so obviously, we're at a, a Polkadot and a Moonbeam conference. So we've got to talk about why Polkadot and Moonbeam are the best place to build this kind of application. We think that we're going to see a lot more applications like Prime emerge on both Polkadot and Moonbeam uh, because Polkadot was built with this idea of interoperability at the very core um, of what this uh, blockchain stands for. Uh, the amazing thing about Polkadot is you can share both assets and data between parachains and you have shared security. You don't have to rely on you know, having different zones where you just basically have to go and trust that uh, the data that you're getting is, is accurate or validated. Um, the substrate framework allows for development of very specialized DeFi block, blockchains. And then those assets that you generate on these specialized DeFi blockchains are then usable anywhere else in the Polkadot ecosystem. As soon as uh, you know, you've reached finality on one parachain, you'll be able to access that data on another one, uh, which makes for a lot of really cool business use cases because you can shape your consensus mechanism to be unique to whatever your business use case is. And finally, it's also fast and affordable. Uh, trying to base an application like ours on a place like ETH L1 just wouldn't have been feasible because we would have priced out all of the potential retail users um, who might want to use this application. And something else that's very important to us is the place where we basically host our nexus, all of our you know, data that we're storing, all of the computations that we're doing that are core to our protocol need to happen with low latency and low cost. Because no matter where you're operating, uh, all of your tr uh, transactions that you do are going back to Moonbeam. They're going back to Polkadot and being processed here. And so we need to make sure that where we're hosting this application, it's low cost and effective. Moonbeam in particular, we think is especially unique because it's basically the perfect hub for this kind of interoperable, cross-chain connected smart uh, contracts network. Uh, they both bridge the EVM universe uh, with their partners like Axelar and the Polkadot universe. So we can take advantage of XCM, be on as many parachains as we want to, 
but we can also very easily tap into existing ecosystems that have a lot of adoption, such as ETH, Polygon, Avalanche, and others, um, all from one place and offer a unified experience with the lowest latency and cost possible. And finally, I just want to talk about this idea of natively multi-chain, uh, which I think is going to be a much larger trend going forward. Because I think a big problem that a lot of these DeFi apps have seen so far is they basically built their application for a single network, they deployed on a ton of networks, and then they want to do a connection after the fact. And the reality of that is, if you don't build with multi-chain in mind, you're going to have a lot of vulnerabilities. There are going to be a lot of new upgrades you have to do. And likely, you'll just have to deploy a whole new protocol in order to accommodate that. And so what I think is unique about Prime and these kinds of applications that we're now building to be natively multi-chain is we've built them in such a way where we're based on Moonbeam, but we can very easily plug in new connections without increasing the cost to all of the existing uh, satellite chains in the network. So the way that Prime works is, as I've alluded to, we have one chain, Moonbeam, where all of the data and computation takes place. That's where if we're deciding whether or not you get liquidated, whether you get to withdrawal, whether you get to borrow, all of that computation, the pricing, uh, that's all stored on Moonbeam. And then if you want to interact with the application, as a user, you don't have to know that. You can do everything you want from another blockchain, but what's happening in the background is we're passing messages via Axelar or via XCM back over to Moonbeam, running those computations, and then firing off a message back. But this has a lot of implications for the security of the overall protocol and the cost and latency of the protocol because we can have one central hub and every new spoke that we add on to isn't impacting the existing network in a way where you know, a complicated web of transactions might be necessary if you hadn't planned to be multi-chain from inception. So as we're wrapping up, I'd encourage all of you to join the Prime community. Uh, we have a Discord invite up here. Uh, also follow us on Twitter uh, and keep posted. Uh, I'm hearing some whispers that there might be a test deck coming out soon. Uh, so make sure that you stay up to date for announcements relating to that. Uh, we also have an OG program that's going right now in our Discord. Uh, there's going to be some educational programs as well. And I'd encourage everybody to hop in, get involved with those, uh, and become an active member of the community uh, as we move forward. I think we have like five minutes left for questions, uh, so would love to uh, chat with anybody uh, if there are uh, any questions out there. Thank you.